So this is lesson 5.1, which is nth roots, radicals, and rational exponents. Our essential question is how are exponents and radicals used to represent roots of real numbers? Okay, so our first example is what are all the real cube roots of 125? So what we're thinking of here is we're thinking of what value is the cube root of 125? Okay, so another way of solving that, if we're trying to undo a cube root, is to cube both sides. So we could say x cubed equals 125. We could then solve this, so we could bring the 125 over to the other side, and then we could factor this. This is one of those difference of cubes, so if you don't have it memorized, you can always look up what is the pattern for difference of cubes. So difference of cubes is x minus 5 times x squared plus 5x plus 25. So then this part right here is going to give us a solution of 5. This right here is non-real. So it says, what are all the real cube roots of 125? So our only solution there would be 5. So we're going to do the same thing over here. What are all the real fourth roots? So we can say x equals the fourth root of 16. We can raise both sides to the fourth power. And then we can get it all onto one side. Oops. And then this is a difference of two squares, so this would be x squared minus 4 and x squared plus 4. So, and then this is also a difference of squares, so x plus 2, x minus 2, and x squared plus 4. So here we would have negative 2, positive 2, and then this right here we know is going to be non-real. It's going to be complex because if we solved it, x squared plus 4, subtracted the 4, did the square root, we would get 2i and negative 2i. And again, it's asking for the real fourth roots. So for this one, we would have a negative 2 and a positive 2. Just a reminder that if you have an odd um, power or an odd root, you're going to have an odd number of real roots. So like here we only have one on the part A, and then if you have an even, um, it's going to be the even number of real roots. So we had, notice we had two real roots over here. Okay. So then example two says, what is the meaning of the exponent in the expression 16 to the 1 fourth power? So what we're thinking of, so what you need to know is if we have A, raised to the b over c power, that is equal to the c root of a to the b. So the way I think of it when I see the fractional exponents is it's raised over rooted. So the top value will always be the number that it's raised to, and the bottom will always be the index of your root. Okay, so if I have 16 to the 1 fourth power, I could rewrite that as the fourth root of 16 to the first power. So then we might know this. We might just know what number raised to the fourth power equals 16. But if you don't, you can always make a factor tree. So you could always say 4 and 4, 2 and 2, 2 and 2. These have been factored. So we need 4 in a group to pull one out because of the index being 4. So the answer to this would just be 2. Okay. Same thing down here. If we have 27 to the 2 thirds power we can rewrite that as the cube root of 27 squared. Now, here's the part where if you're simplifying this, I wouldn't take the time to do 27 squared and get a value. I would just rewrite this as the cube root of 27 times 27, especially if you're making a factor tree. So I know 27 is 9 and 3, and 9 and 3, and I know 9 is 3 and 3, and 3 and 3. I'm going to cross off those that I factored. So the index in this root is 3, so I need three numbers in a group. So I would have three threes and three threes. I multiply one from each group together, so my answer here would be 9. Okay, so then we're practicing this. So we have 32 
to the 3 fifths power. So we can do it like we did on the previous slide, but there's other ways we can think about this. We could think of this as 32 to the 1 fifth power raised to the third. And so 30, 32 to the 1 fifth power is saying the same thing as the fifth root of 32. And the more you get used to all of these, the more you're going to kind of just know them. So we um, hopefully you'll eventually get to the point where you just know, okay, 2 to the 5th power is 32, so this would turn into 2 cubed, which is just 8. But you could all, there's multiple ways of solving this. So you could also take the 5th root of 32 cubed, write out 32 three times, factor it all, and look for groups of 5. That also works. Okay, 27 to the negative 2 thirds, I can rewrite as 27 to the one-third power raised to the negative two, based on our power properties. So 27 to the one-third power is just three. Three to the negative two. So remember when we have a negative exponent, it moves it to the bottom. So this would be one over three squared, which would be one-ninth. Okay, and then our last one here, I'm running out of room. I'll erase the first one. So I have 50 to the 3 fourths. So if I think about it, if I look at the, the denominator of our fractional exponent, I think there's no fourth root of 50. So I'm going to do this one like the previous problem. So I'm going to say this would be the fourth root of 50 to the third, which means this would be the fourth root of 50 times 50 times 50. 50, I know, is 5 and 10. 5 and 10. 5 and 10. 10 is 5 and 2. 5 and 2. And 5 and 2. Okay, so this is a fourth root. Fourth is our index. Four is our index. So we need four numbers in a group. So I'm going to use a different color here. So here I have two fives and another two fives, so there's a group of fives. And then if I count the leftovers here, I only have two fives left, and I only have three twos left, so I don't have four, another group of four. So that is all I can take out of this one, so I can say five goes on the outside, and then I multiply everything left on the inside. So I multiply five times fives, 25 times eight, which is the two times two times two, so I would get 200. So that is simplified radical form. You could also, if it asks you for a decimal, it might ask you for a decimal value. So both of those are different methods. Just be careful when you're doing the assignment that you're giving them the answer in the form that they would like. Okay, so our next part is to simplify expressions. So these now, we have some variables in here. So 32, the fifth root of 32. Again, you're going to see some of these so many times that you're like, hey, I know the fifth root of 32. It's 2. But if you're not sure, you can always say, okay, this is 16 and 2, 4 and 4, 2 and 2, 2 and 2, cross out the ones you've factored, and then we have a group of five twos. Now, this problem only, I'm going to just draw out the M's. So we have 15 M's. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, we need groups of five. So we have one group of five, two, three groups of five. If I simplify this, I would get 2m to the third power. Now, something to note. This is an odd index. It's five. So we're taking the fifth root. So we don't need to worry about our answer being positive or negative, it's going to come out to the value that it is. Because when we take an odd root, we know we can take the odd root and get a negative um, answer out. That's okay. We can take the, the cube root of a negative number and we get a negative as our answer. When we have an even root, we have to be a little bit careful. Okay. So I'm not going to write out 20 x's because we know how many groups of four would we have in 20, we would have 5, so this would be x to the 5th power. And then how many groups of 4 do we have in, in 8? We have 2, so this would be x to the 5th y squared. However, because this is an even root, 
and we don't know what our variables are. We don't know if they're positive or negative, so because of that, we would need to say this needs to be the absolute value. So the principal fourth root, so the principal root uh, um, even of an even index root is needs to be positive, needs to be non-negative. So then we can simplify this one step further. We know that if I take any number, positive or negative, and I square it, it's going to turn positive. But we don't know about that fifth power, because that's an odd power. So I could write this as the absolute value of x to the fifth times y squared. So I'm allowed to take out the y squared because I know positive or negative doesn't matter what the value is. If I square it, it's going to be positive. Okay, in our last example, we're finding the real solutions to the equation 2x to the fifth equals 64. So the first step here, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So I get x to the fifth equals 32. So then two ways of doing this, you can either take the fifth root of both sides or you can raise it to the reciprocal. So if I raise it to the one-fifth power, we know by our power properties when we multiply those together, it would just turn into one, so just turn into x. And then we can look at this as 32 to the one-fifth. You could type that in your calculator, 32 raised to the one-fifth. It's a little bit easier than trying to find the fifth root button on your calculator. Um, or again, we know that what number raised to the fifth power is 32, that would be two. So that would be our solution. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.